Hi DIYers, I'm George from Alarm Grid. Today I'm going to be going over how to upgrade your Lynx Touch Alarm System so that you can actually use an LTE communication device on it. So first things we need to go ahead and go over is a lot of you guys that are out there that have an existing system or that have moved into a house that has an ex existing system, this is probably going to be the best video and FAQ for you. The reason why is a lot of these older systems that are already pre-installed most of them have cellular communicators, but the only thing is that they have the older versions. Now, what does this mean for you? Now, as you all know, AT&T and Verizon, they have their LTE communication paths. Um, and then like AT&T just released their 5G. So some of you guys, if you look at your cell phone, if you look at the cellular if you look at the cellular bars, some of you may be seeing 5G on there when before you used to say LTE and then before that you guys used to see 3G and 4G. Now something happened in June of 2019, even a couple of months before then, but basically AT&T announced that they were going to be shutting down their AT&T 3G, 4G cellular towers, right? So what does that mean for you guys out there? now? They're not doing this until it's estimated February of 2022. But when these ma alarm manufacturers heard of this, what they ended up saying is that they're going to stop allowing any new activations of 3G, 4G cellular cards that are out there in June of 2019. Um, for those of you that have Verizon, the CDMA towers have also been estimated to shut down. I believe it's a year before that, uh, so it'd be in 2021. Um, so this is just something so that you guys can start thinking about, right? So if you guys are currently active right now and you have an active CDMA or 3G, 4G communicator, you are eventually going to have to replace it. And this is probably why you're looking at this video or FAQ. Now, the 3G, 4Gs, like I said, you guys still have some time on them, but it's inevitable that you guys are going to have to replace them. Now, you guys, we're letting you know way in advance so you guys don't have to rush to do it last minute. And there's nothing wrong with jumping the gun and doing it right now. So the only thing with LTE communication devices is that they do require a new firmware update. Now, the new firmware update for the L5210s and the L7000s can actually be done with this. Uh, um, it's a... Uh, it's an updater tool that Honeywell made for their Lynx Touch systems. Now, something to keep in mind that's very important, only the L5210s and the L7000s will work with the new LTE communicators. What does that mean for you guys out there? If you have an L5000, an L5100, an L5200, that's a specific case, I'm gonna get to that in a second, but basically any L5100s that you have out there that used to use the GSM VLP5 4G, it's a 3G, 4G cellular communicator on AT&T, you will not be able to upgrade that to cellular because it's too old of a panel and Honeywell is not making LTE communicators for that system. Um, so basically, you, if you want, you would still be able to run it on Wi-Fi, uh, but if you're looking for cellular, you are gonna have to upgrade the panel to a new panel, L5210, an L7000, a Lyric. There's a whole different amount, variety of panels you guys can upgrade to. Now, the special case with the L5200. So this firmware updater tool, you see here it says supports L5200 family LTE upgrade. That's a sticker on the updater tool and what this sticker means if you have this, it means that you are gonna be able to turn your L5200 into an L5210 that's on the latest firmware that will then work with an LTE communicator. So for those of you that still have an L5200, you guys are in luck. Yeah, you guys just need to get this tool. Now, going with the firmware up with the firmware on your panel right you first if you're going to be upgrading to lte you need to make sure you're on the newest firmware update the newest firmware update is version 9.00.201 and 0.209 209 is the latest and that's the one that you're more than likely going to get when you guys get this firmware update or tool and i'm going to show you guys how to check this in a second so that that way if you guys are interested in buying your lte communication device you guys will actually before you buy it you'll know if you need this little tool or not all right so the first thing we need to go ahead and do is if you have your alarm system pulled up um, this is the main screen we're going to go ahead and go to security once you're at security you're going to hit more you're going to go to tools and here you're just going to use the master code 
This is the code that you use to arm and disarm with. It's the code that you use to make other codes with. So I'm, mine is defaulted at one, two, three, four. So if you use the correct code, you'll be taken to this screen. Users, events, tests, keypad, daytime, reminders, slideshow. This is the master code menu. Now to check the firmware update, very easy. You go to test and the revision number is right up there. Now, for those of you guys who are using uh, the LTE AT&T or the LTE Verizon, they're both the same price on our website. Uh, the monitoring costs the exact same. A lot of you guys were, how, how do I know which one I use? You know, on my cell phones, I use AT&T or on my cell phones, I use Verizon. It doesn't matter for the alarm system because you are not going to be the one that's contacting these cellular companies and saying, hey, I need to add on another line. That registration of the SIM card is actually done by the alarm company when they activate your alarm system. So you do not need to contact AT&T or Verizon for any reason at all to get your system uh, or to get your SIM card activated that's in the alarm system. It's completely independent from your cell phones and your cellular plans. All right. So uh, the AT&T one uh, will actually require revision uh, 09.00. Uh, usually there's another decimal right there in the middle, but if you guys don't have it, that's fine. It'll be 00201 for AT&T. Um, so if you have 201 for AT&T, uh, I'm sorry, if you have 00201 as your revision, then that's perfect for the AT&T communicator. If you guys are planning on using the Verizon LTE communicator, you guys need to have 00209. If it says 00201, you guys will not be able to use the Verizon LTE communicator. You'll still need to get this firmware updater tool to get it up to this 209. All right. And um, really, whenever you're choosing AT&T or Verizon, you just want to make sure that you guys are using the correct or the communicator that has the best cellular signal in your area. All right. So um, if you guys have anything lower than 09.00201 uh, or 209, then you guys do want to make sure you go out and you buy this Lynx Touch Updater tool. Um, so most of you guys out there that have a 3G, 4G, or even a Verizon CDMA communicator, you're going to notice that your firmware version is probably on 07 or 08. Those are too old. You need to upgrade to a new firmware updater tool. All right, so make sure you check your revision on the system. Um, your software, your software revision, and uh, that'll let you know whether or not when you buy the updater tool, whether or not you'll need this. All right. So let me just hit the back arrow key back out to the main screen. Now, after you guys have confirmed your firmware version, let's say you guys do need the updater tool. Um, we actually have a bundle that comes with the updater tool and the LTE communicator. It, we have the tool, uh, the, the kit or the little bundle with the AT&T and a bundle with the Verizon communicator. So make sure you guys look at those. Uh, that way you knock out two birds with one stone. Um, and uh, just real quick, just so you guys, we actually have an FAQ on how to update your links panel on the updater tool. It doesn't matter if you're using an L5200, an L5210 or an L7000, that video, it's the same process for whatever panel you're using. So you'll need this. You'll need that, that video or that FAQ to walk you through it. And um, the LTE communicator, just so you guys can see here, you guys need to pop the panel open. So there's two tabs at the top that you just push down to unlock the cover. One second. Once you push down the two, the two, the two tabs here and here, the cover will swing open and the LTE communicator is going to go right into this these, this little slot right here. It'll come with a little female connector piece and it goes on the left hand side. The Wi-Fi module goes on this side, which is right underneath the ringer. And then as you see, we have a Z-Wave module as well in this L7000. Now the circuit board is going to look the same whether or not you have the L5210, the L7000 or the L5200. If you look at this little sticker right here, It'll actually let you know the uh, the model of the system that you have. So this is an SA7000. That's just letting me know that I have an L7000. If you have a 5210, it'll say 5210 for 5210. And if you have a 5200, it'll say 5200 for 5200. Yes. Um, make sure that when you guys are installing these communicators, you unplug the backup battery, which is right here. Uh, if you guys have an LT cable, 
you can remove, uh, well actually, if you guys have the LT cable, you have this little piece right here, and my other piece just fell behind the wall, but that basically just powers on the system. Or if you guys have the little adapter piece, you can plug it directly into here. Now some systems are not gonna have this barrel connector, so you may need to use these, this, uh, the, the, the positive and negative for the DC power. Yeah, so my system actually just lost AC power, so it will be powered down. But yeah, make sure whenever you guys are doing the updater tool and the, um, the installation of the cellular communicator, that is pretty much how you power down your L7000. Uh, you just unplug the backup battery, you unplug it from the, uh, from the LT cable if you have it. If you're not using the LT cable, just unplug the power supply from the wall. I don't recommend if you have the splice cables going into the terminals to unplug those because those are live wires. If you touch anything, you might fry or short circuit the system. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that after you've confirmed the firmware, the firmware revision, on your system, the software rev software revision, and uh, if after you've confirmed what which communicator works better in your area, whether it's Verizon or AT and T, you just have to make sure you buy the correct devices you need, and then you go ahead and do that. Now, when you're upgrading your system to LTE, and if you're planning on getting it monitored, for those of you guys who are moving into a house that needs this update and the cellular communicator, you need to make sure that the plans you're going with, that they're actually cellular plans. So Honeywell, they have internet Wi-Fi plans. They also have cellular plans. We usually recommend cellular as they are a lot more reliable. Wi-Fi is sometimes can be a little um, unreliable. What I mean by that is, you know, your power may go out. If your power goes out, you lose connection to your Wi-Fi. If a burglar cuts the internet line that's going into the house, your panel loses internet. Uh, if, you're con if your devices just connect or if your router decides to act all finicky, um, you know, we're all, not com we're all not strangers to having to go to the router, power it off for 30 seconds, power it back on, and then reconnect all the devices, right? I'm sure one of you guys uh, out there have done that throughout your whole, <laughs> throughout having Wi-Fi in your house at least one one time in uh, in your lifetime, yeah. So rebooting your router, reconnecting all the devices, we're not strangers to this. If you guys have a cellular communicator and your Wi-Fi goes out, you don't have to worry because you know your system is still being monitored. So cellular is always gonna be a lot more reliable and we usually recommend doing that. Just make sure you sign up for the correct plans according to what communication path you're using. If you guys have any other questions about upgrading your L5200, your L5210, your L7000, um, feel free to contact us at support at alarmgrid.com. If you found the video helpful, make sure you hit like underneath, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and hit the little bell icon so that whenever we upload new content, you guys get notified. I'm George, and I'll see you guys next time.